Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome. I hope everybody can hear me. No? Okay. Actually, it's good that Hillary's back. Um, there is no mic, I think. The okay. So I, I will start again. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Oh, that works. Okay. Um, I am Peggy Edersheim Kalb. I am uh, president of the Board of Trustees. And I'm here to welcome you all to hear about the exciting plans for Cospop Library. Um, you're going to be hearing from a whole list of people, but I'm going to start you off by introducing Joe Williams, who's executive director of the library, and he is going to take it from here. Okay. Oh my God, I got applause, and I didn't even have to say anything yet. See, this is what this is the type from when I don't want to wear glasses. All right, good evening. Uh, it's so nice to see you all who came here tonight and those who are online. It's an indicator of how important the Coscob Library is to your community. My philosophy about branch libraries, like the one we're standing in tonight, are that they are about building community. They create hubs where people can meet, engage, learn, and develop bonds with their neighbors, friends, and colleagues. That is why the investment in our branch libraries is most important to the health of your community. This has always been the case in Cos Cobb, whose residents have always identified a need for their neighborhood to be distinctive. In 1930, the Cos Cobb Branch Library first opened inside the Cos Cobb School. The Greenwich Library director reported at the time, on Tuesday evenings, boys and girls who have finished school and are working come to the library to hunt the inevitable Western story and mystery tale. Though their reading is of the lightest, the books hold them and they never fail to appear on the nights the library is open. The Coscob Library's value grew. In 1943, the branch librarian reported, it might be encouraging for the potential users of this branch to know that in the opinion of one well-read Dutchman, who has used many libraries all the way from the Dutch East Indies to Connecticut, he has never had such satisfactory service as in this branch library. The branch remained at the school for over 40 years until it moved in 1971 to Mill Pond and then the shopping center, and finally this location in 1999. And it is clear how important the library has been and will be for Cos Cop. And there is no more important element, at least to me and I think to you, than the staff. That is why I am so pleased to introduce to you the new branch manager tonight. Carla Sherman holds an MLS degree from LIU as well as a certificate in archives and records management. Prior to Greenwich Library, Carla worked in the entertainment industry in TV and movie post-production and managed the digitization of legacy film and video assets for digital repositories. Carla has been with Greenwich Library since 2017 when she was hired in a part-time role. Her talents were recognized and in 2019, she was promoted to a full-time position as the assistant training librarian. In this position, she has created programs for the public in new and innovative ways from virtual programming during and after the COVID closure to exploring technologies in space, photography, chat GPT, and everyday applications. She is also the head of the library's web assessment committee and has also provided leadership in our innovation lab. But wait, there's more. Carla also has extensive experience working reference at the main library both for children and adults. Carla tells me that she happily reads most genres, but specifically follows young adult collections and children's novels, nonfiction and historic fiction, but always enjoys recommendations of others. So when you come into the library, you know, give her, her your two cents and tell her what books you like to read, right? So without any further ado, please welcome Carla Sherman, your new branch librarian. my glasses on. Hi, welcome. I kind of feel a little bit silly saying welcome because I'm clearly the new kid on the block here. 
um, but welcome to the library. I'm glad to see everybody here. Um, just a couple short words for you. When I interviewed for this position, Joe stressed community. Coscob is all about community. Like, yep, I got it, community. And I walked out of that interview feeling like that's the one thing in my life that like I could really use is community. Um, then I got here and the staff is so complimentary about all the patrons and the patrons walk through the door and they're so complimentary towards the staff. Um, it makes me feel like everyone that walks through the door is greeted with, hey, Norm, from Cheers. And that's what it feels like to me. And it's kind of insane. Um, and I love it. And I love the kids that come here after school, walking across the way and spend their afternoons with us. Um, I'm really enjoying the people I'm meeting. Um, I'm going to forget names. There's clearly a lot of people to learn, but I'm excited to do it. Um, I'm excited to meet you and your families. Um, hopefully be here a long time, do a lot of fun, big things. So um, that's it. I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you so much. I think I'm official introducer. I would like to introduce Fred Camillo, our oh, newly elected. Welcome to die. Our newly reelected first selectman. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I'm in a, looking like this, but uh, it's the day after an election, so it's uh, we're cleaning up things and throwing things away and recycling things, and uh, and I have to run over to town hall in a few minutes, but. Uh, Thank you so much here. I'm looking forward to the, the renovation coming up here. Uh, this is truly a great treasure in, in Costco. As I always tell people, I'm um, standing in what was my cousin Rosie's kitchen. <laughs> Rose Romeo and, and Nick Romeo, they lived, this was their property. But uh, this is a, a great treasure here. And I know, uh, I'm looking at Peter. Peter's uh, been working, uh, you know, thinking, dreaming about expansions here for how long? 30 years? Close, right? 20, 20. At least twenty, right? <laughs> Not like <laughs> Never let the facts get in the way of a good story, right? Thirty, but um, anyway, any if there's any questions about going forward? We're uh, gearing up for the uh, the new term in in December, and uh, you know, always very supportive of Joe and everything that's going on here at the you know in Greenwich and Costco and over in Parat and Environ, and we're lucky, you know. But we saw during the pandemic that uh, libraries are very very important. And uh, we know they are, but certainly in times like that or whenever there's a downturn in the economy, that's where people go. So thank you for being uh, you know, a treasure for our town. And, and anything you need from Town Hall just knows as long as I'm there for at least two more years, I'll be super supportive of all of you. So thank you so much. Any questions? Any questions? Bobby, any questions? Yeah, why don't we get some bike bikes? <laughs> If only they would listen to <laughs> no. But thank, thank you, Ernst. They really do. I appreciate it. Thanks again, everybody. Okay, I'm back. More introduction. I'm looking over at the door, but I don't I, I don't think there are any more surprises. Um all right, well, thank you, Carla. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Hank Ashforth and Jill Cobbs, who have shepherded this project. And we'll get into the specifics of the plans on behalf of the Libraries, Buildings, and Grounds Committee. So, Jill and Hank, you're up. Uh, thank you very much. I'll stand in for my uh, compadre here, uh, Jill <laughs> Cobbs. But, well, anyway, uh, thank you all. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, I'll start by saying it was a short six months ago. Many of you may have been at the meeting over at the firehouse where I stood before you and I said, this renovation project is on pause. 
uh, we did pause it. Uh, and during that time, we I asked for you, I asked for your support, I asked for your participation, and I asked for your patience. And I thank you for all three of those things because the in these six months, these past six months, we have uh, rethought the project, gone back to our professionals, uh, gone to you, uh, the community, uh, the neighborhood and ask for your input through a survey. Some 2,000 of you responded, actually over 2,000 responded, uh, and we have made adjustments uh, accordingly. Uh, there are plenty of people to thank, certainly our professional staff. You'll hear from Michael Tribe, our architect, uh, shortly. Uh, I will introduce him uh, as well to keep the ball rolling, but uh, also would like to thank the friends of Coscob. Uh, Deb is here. You'll hear from her a little bit later, but you uh, and your team dug in on this and really uh, held us uh, on course. Uh, Peter Berg, of course, we need to thank for your constant uh, 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 deliberation and, and, and uh, 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 insistence on, on getting this right. And I think we have. Uh, it has been completely collaborative, uh, a key word there, as I've said before, uh, well-researched uh, and has the professional uh, input that will, uh, will will carry the day for sure. So uh, I know you all have the, the short description in front of you. Uh, you can see to take the high points there, you can see that uh, we will expand by some uh, a little over 1,100 uh, square feet uh, and 857 uh, square feet of which will be a new community room. The, the survey results, uh, if I back up just a bit, didn't land on anything that said, this is the number one thing that we want hands down 90%, you know, we need to do this. It really was split into, into three things, three areas, uh, which we took uh, and, and uh, we came back uh, and, and thought on. A really a community room, uh, that 857 square feet, which will be straight through this wall, uh, children's area, and then a collection uh, space as well. We're the three things that really uh, sifted out of the out of the survey. We've addressed them uh, in the plans that uh, will be uh, presented to you shortly. Uh, then it took the creativity of the staff here to really again look at survey results, look at the usage, where is it coming from, and they suggested. As you can read here, maybe we flip flop the children's area with the adult area, uh, and that I think will uh, be a vast improvement. Uh, you know, and adding some 600 square feet to the children and young adult area, which uh, will uh, again I think uh, uh, answer, certainly answered your call uh, from the survey, and uh, will give uh, you know. Uh, well, all sorts of, of uh, uh, learning opportunities and whatever for the children's and adults uh, themselves. So uh, just in, in closing uh, a completely collaborative uh, effort, we couldn't be more excited about where we stand today. Uh, we are you know, headed to the town hall for approvals uh, on this. Uh, the board of trustees has unanimously uh, voted for this as I understand friends. Uh, of Costco have as well. So uh, we, uh, I stand stand here, uh, as I say, couldn't be more excited about where we stand because we paused, because we had the time to rethink uh, uh, where we are because of your input. Uh, Costco Library will, will uh, uh, again, uh, uh, rebloom and reflourish and, and, uh, uh, remain an important part uh, of this neighborhood, as I know you all think. So uh, for more details uh, on uh, the renovation plan that's ahead, Michael Tribe, our architect, come on up. Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Hank. Um, then if we could go to the next slide, the first slide. Uh, this is Oh, that worked. 
Yeah. So th this is a survey of the property. And if you look, there's a horizontal line that crosses right just south of the building. Um, so all the parking that's south of the library all belongs to the town. And the parking that's part of the library is to the left of the library. There's 15 parking spaces there. Uh, this lot is about 18,400 square feet. The size of the building is about 5,511 square feet. Uh, next slide. This is just a, a larger uh, a view of the two parking areas. Um, and you can see the parking of the library has two driveways going into it. Next slide. Um, so this was what we showed originally. It was just to remind you where we were. And we thought that it was very important to keep the 15 parking spaces. So if we kept the 15 parking spaces, the addition could only be about approximately 400 square feet. So that's what we first started with. If we go to, and you can see the, the other change is that we have a single driveway coming in and the handicap parking is as close to the library as possible. If we go to the next one, um, again, this is just showing the current library and its current organization. As you come in through the doors, to the right is where the adult library is, to the left, children, and the center is the circulation desk, and we're in the room, in the, in the community room. Next slide. So this is what we're proposing now. Um, and it's based on the FAR, which is a floor area, area ratio. And it's a multiplication of what the size of the property is times a multiplier, and it tells you how big you can build by code what's required. So if we have 5,511, we can go to 6,600 and change. We can add 1,120 square feet and be within the limitations of what the town allows us to build. That's what that shows. When we do that, we're actually reducing the number of parking spaces from 15 to 13. So we lose two parking spaces with this solution. If we go to the next one. So here it's uh, shown in a, um, in a rendering uh, with the 13 parking spaces to the left, uh, the handicapped spot close to where the ramp is. Uh, and you can see the addition actually starts right beyond, like Hank said, right beyond this wall, and it would be a large meeting room. If we go to the next slide, we'll get a little closer. So we can see this ever, ever a little bigger. So as you come through the doors, this is a very uh, interesting idea that came from the library it's that Hank mentioned earlier of switching the children's library and the adult library. So as you come in through the doors to the right-hand side is where the children's library is. All the way in the back would be uh, an area for young adults. Uh, computers are kind of in the center of the space and the younger children towards the front in that half round area. The furniture there is movable, which allows the library to have programs in that space. So you can have programs for children right within that area. And one of the suggestions and ideas is to create a glass wall with glass doors so that if there is a, a program there, or there's a lot of noise, you could mitigate the sound by that glass wall um, that would run uh, up down uh, on the drawing. Circulation desk stays in the same location with some upgrades. And then to the left is where the adult library would move to. Um, and it expands itself into this room. So this room would be partially with stacks, uh, study carrels, and reading areas. And within the uh, octagon, the tower, we thought that could be the computer area. In this case, we have desks along the perimeter, but we'll also look at the possibility of maybe putting a, a central table with the computers around and you could be able to walk around it. These are furniture things that we can develop okay. further. And then from there, you come into the larger meeting room, which is divisible. So it has a, a partition down the middle that allows it to be separated into two different meeting spaces or used as a larger meeting space. If you, if you do divide it, that means that you potentially have three different programs going on uh, within the library, um, or one larger one and a smaller one within the children. Um, next slide. Oh, this is the same. This was just to talk about the furniture. The, the, one more. Um, okay, so the bottom drawing is the current uh, library in its current size 
It's just a rendering of what it looks like. The drawing above shows how the addition would match into the library. So it has a similar roof, uh, similar eave, uh, and materials that, that come across, even the, the windows are the same size and proportion. So that all kind of matches and would look like it belongs. We're not creating something different here, but it actually melds together. Um, and the next one shows us uh, the same idea, but in a rendering. Again, the bottom one is the current image, and the one above is the rendering showing how the expansion would work. Um, it does have an egress door there that's not for uh, usage. Uh, the library prefers that all access comes through the front door. Uh, so that door that we see there on the side is just an egress door. Um, I think that's that's it for now, and we'll answer some questions uh, in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're up to questions and answers. So questions, all right, one back there. Um, during uh, some severe ice oh. storms. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. Uh, when towns experience blackouts, brownouts, the Grant Library became a safety uh, net. And one of the things I know here, we're all on the first floor, a uh, one floor plan. I'm wondering, I know it's the FAR, if this could be a second story plan with just storage space, uh, not used uh, uh, functioning space, which may be allowed by the FAR, it could be an additional relief for things that could be stored in the library and also an additional space that could be used for emergency shelters and uh, storm outages and like that. And I, I know the construction of a one story with a roof, it's very pretty. And, but I don't feel that spending all that money without putting a second story of storage of some sort of secondary use, it, it should be taken advantage of, I think. Yeah, and that's that's a, that's an interesting idea. We did look at even what you have now, which is a vast attic, right? There's a lot of space up there. How could it be used? Anything that we do up there, we have to put staircases, right? So you have to get up and down and you have to have egress. That starts cutting out. You start losing square footage of this floor by trying to add space above. Um, and the FAR, is, it's very clear. It's, it's occupied space. Um, so anything that they feel that in the future you would turn into an occupied space that were, you know, the town would allow it. I'm dealing with converting right now because of our special design work. Yeah, um, converting a three car garage into a, a dwelling above. Yeah. And uh, the FAR happens to be in Norwalk. Their uh, limitations wouldn't permit a whole three car garage footprint to become an apartment. So we had to dedicate 400 square feet of storage. But what they allow is a pull down, a very rigid pull down steel staircase to the storage area. As long as we're sheetrocking and making the fire barrier with the 5 8 sheetrock, we're able to leave that as a ceiling, no stairs in front of anything. That's a solution for this. You don't have to interrupt anything unless an emergency occurs. Right. And, and we can consider that. I mean, we can look into it. I and mean, nothing, nothing is, is off the table. So that's an, an idea that we could pursue and, and, and check it out. What we are doing is upgrading all the electrical. Uh, so that if there is an emergency situation that people need to come in and plug in their phones or whatever, that there will be a much better distribution of power through the building. So what, what, what wasn't clear to me is with a new meeting room over there, will the entrance for the meeting room be on that side as opposed to coming through the main entrance? So the library made it very clear that they want to have one entrance to the building. They don't want to have a second entrance where people are coming and going. Well, that, I mean, I mean for, for, for the meeting hall, like, like, like this meeting, if, if we have to come from the side, you know, from, from the main entrance would be a, a little bit more, more difficult. And especially during, you know, rain or snow, it would, it would be, a, be a problem. Whereas if we had a, the, the larger meeting room over there and just use that entrance for meetings, you know, especially evening meetings, yeah, it's, that's an operational thing. So that's up to the library. I mean, we're, we've designed it. It does have two exits. This this door is going to remain. Uh, and there's another one that goes out towards the front of the building. If some situation like that, then it's up to the library to decide how, how it's best to, to do that. Yeah. 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 Y
um just uh, we have one omission uh deb armstrong uh i think we got you okay all right sounds good okay i'll make a quick detail at this point i really think we run an above average security risk if there is a panic an evacuation and so on if there's a kids program going on you will never get them to one door you really need to rethink this there are no other doors there are exits their, their library exits to the back of the building, to the front of the building, here the back and, and to the front. So there are plenty of exits. We just, when we just talked about it, they're just exits. We don't want necessarily people coming in through a back door. That That's a locked door, right? And it makes it secure that way. Sure. I have a library question. Um, beautiful building, thank you. <laughs> My name is Faith Kenny. Hi, my children are in the other room, probably causing a ruckus and reading books. Um, I wanted to thank, first of all, the library um, for sending out a survey. I think it's a beautiful process where you ask for input and you get input and it reflects the design. Thank you. Um, the only thing I wanted to point out was that the um, Crosstop Library only has part-time children's librarians. And we're doing such a beautiful, beautiful new space beautiful opportunity for children for more programming. Um, and I think that it would be a wasted opportunity not to um, have a full-time librarian. Um, and I am a preschool teacher here in town and we always say that the classroom is like a second teacher. The classroom is a learning environment that the teacher sets up and then the children can learn from that. Um, so I feel like we have a beautiful classroom. Um, we just need to make sure that we have a teacher there to facilitate programming. Uh, well, no, thank you for the comments. And you know, I did uh, receive your email before on that too. So yeah, it's uh, these comments and everything. We're looking at them moving forward as you know we look for future staffing here. So I appreciate that. Thank you. For adults, and is it all sort of hardwood, or is there some place you know nice and comfortable, like at the main library, where you can sit there and relax and actually read a book in the library or a newspaper or magazine or whatever? Yeah, I think contemplating a variety of different arrangements in terms of seating from study carols to um, large tables where a group can sit around to some soft, comfortable seating. This is preliminary. There is a lot to still be developed. We haven't drawn into elevations. We don't know what the lighting totally is. We've done some drawings to be able to get some estimating done. So we kind of understand budget-wise where we're going, but we're still kind of in phase one of three major phases of design. And when we look at the... Time, or is it actually no, we, we're increasing the seating by quite a bit, mm -hmm. and that we haven't selected furniture yet. Uh, we just have an idea, but we will come back to the library with with these designs and and make sure that we're doing this with the library and they're they're guiding us so that we give you um, you know the best furniture possible. Yep. The uh, mm -hmm. present square footage of this community room? It's about, it's slightly over 400 square feet. It's like 410 or something. So like basically that. we're adding double. It's more than double, mm -hmm. yes. And during the construction phase, is, is the library going to be able to function? So that's, a, the phasing is, it's very interesting. Um, there are possibilities of keeping part of the library open. There may be a possibility of moving the library somewhere else. These are all things that the library needs to figure out. Uh, but yes, they want to keep the service going and they're going to find a solution. Luckily, the addition is kind of separate in a way, but the con it's not only the addition. There's all of these renovations are going to happen to the library itself. So how do you phase it so that some part is open and then you move things around and then there'll be the renovations? Still to be determined, but the, the intent is to keep the library open. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a brief question. 
One was, let me talk about schedule. Can anybody talk about funding? Maybe it's already been out there. I'm not sure, but and particularly how the town gets involved with funding this, not, not so much the operational thing, but the construction, the roadway expansion. And then what aspects of town approvals like municipal improvement or et cetera have to be hurdled, so to speak. Can um, anybody address those three yeah. issues? Yeah, I think the, the approvals is fairly simple because there are no variances. We're not asking for anything from the town. The only issue is that we are do, we're losing two parking spaces, but because of this reset, we did a, the library did a whole parking study. And in the worst situations, there's always a few additional parking spaces that are available. So it's easy to demonstrate to the town that by losing those two spaces and gaining one on the town lot, we're really down just one space. And so so that part, so it's, it's just going to, you know, planning and zoning, and, and going to the architectural review uh, team, and then the, 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 the municipal uh, groups where we have to show that what's happening with drainage, what we're doing with planting, like all of those typical things that you do. I'll let you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the question was, um, how is this being funded, right? Common, it's it's being funded a uh, combination of private and public funding. Uh, the majority of the project is funded privately through trustees and also some fundraising uh, efforts that will be led by the uh, Friends of the Costco Library. Uh, and also through the town, uh, through the Capital Improvement Project budget, we are asking uh, in the budget this coming fiscal year for $421,000, I believe, or it's four, it's 421 or 426. And those are for capital maintenance items that have to deal with the original building in our guidelines with the town. The town uh, is responsible for capital uh, improvements and maintenance of the building. Uh, so the private, ex the private, uh, funds pay for expansion and then certain elements within the building would be paid for through public comment. So it's important uh, to realize and advocate for uh, that funding through the town so that uh, that contribution is reached. So <laughs> that is correct, sir. <laughs> My understanding is on municipal improvement that we don't need municipal improvement because this is privately held. The, yeah, the land is private. This is not this is not owned by the town of Greenwich. No, yeah, we're trying to make a smooth process. I think your last question was on schedule. Uh, so in round numbers, we're we're just getting in front of the town right now for their approvals. Uh, so that will hopefully we'll get in the December calendar, if not first thing in January, uh, because we're not seeking any variances or what have you. We hopefully should should get through that uh, that gate pretty quickly. Uh, and if that happens, we'll leave enough time for to get construction drawings done. So with fingers crossed, October uh, of next year, we'll start making a mess here and punching through that wall and, and starting construction. Yeah, I would hope less than that. But to answer your question, once once we get in and see drawings and get to contractors, the very first question we'll ask them is, how are you going to phase this? And knowing the library, if the library truly wants to stay open, we will make that uh, uh, a possible and you'll be playing a kind of a hopscotch game of whatever is finished we'll go to where it's finished and then we'll work on others and we'll kind of work our way out of the uh out of the library probably out through the new children's area or or the other way around but that is a critical question and it will be you know top priority of the remember the contractor that uh, that gets awarded you bet it's just a question about who's the parking lot that's across the street where you 
That's uh that's a town lot, I believe. Town lot. Yeah, town lot. Mm -hmm. My, my wife Jan works here. She loves working here. So mm -hmm. We love Jan. <laughs> Hi, Jan. <laughs> so my question is, I mean, with the, with the renovation here, is there a look at Actually, we forgot to mention that. Yeah. The answer, the answer is yes. We were we were investigating. In fact, uh, I had one of the proposed contractors on the phone yesterday, uh, so they will do their study. We'll get some others, and uh, the roof here is is south facing and. Even we've got a western exposure as well, so uh, we'll maximize the number of panels that you that you can get. Um, I'm you're talking to someone who has solar on their home, and I I love every minute every minute of it. So yeah, if it works, uh, yeah, we'll do it for sure. Mm -hmm. My name is Ern Shermer. I've been living here in the area since 2004. <clears throat> I've been here once a couple times a week. Uh, can you please pull down the slide that shows the exterior light? Because I saw a lot of trees popping up there. Can you use that slide one more time? Jeff, can you advance so the slide comes up in question? You're looking for the rendering, Ernst? No, there was one that showed like the parking lot. Oh, yeah. And got a lot of green like space and all those trees. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. I mean, I love the nature and I love the people who do a lot of gardening work and all these types of things. I'm just wondering a little bit. Um, I see a lot of families, nannies and so on, they come and picnic. I understand picnicking under a tree is a fun thing to do as well. But once in a while, we had programs, outdoor music and so mm -hmm. on. So... Obviously, the more we do for healthy air and oxygen, I support that. But in a way, can we find the balance so that some of these great outdoor events and so on, can we plant these things so that that is still enabled, please? It was about um, outdoor plant things. Yeah. So we did have a meeting with the library recently to talk about all the outdoors, which trees need to be replaced and so on. This is an early rendering. Uh, and the renderer put in way too many trees. So <laughs> they, they got excited. This is not what it's going to look like. We know that that lawn is very important for all the programs that happen outside. So this this is not reality. It's just a rendering. Maybe you could have for like four or five more benches or some, something looking new. Yeah. Just like, that, is just a that, that is parks and rec. Right? So yeah. Yeah. Parks and rec. Yeah. It's so like, it's a it's a handshake with the town because it is town property. Everything south of south of this line, PPC East Line, library property, town property. So we're going to have to engage with uh, parks and rec to yeah. work with the Joseph Ziano yeah. to work through this definitely. Uh, we have a question over here. One of the rumors that I heard along the way was something about a Gazebo on the north side. Is there any No, right now there's no plans for outdoor work. It's something that we're going to look at again later. Uh, so for now, we're just concentrating on the expansion um, of the building itself and the renovation of the interior. And, and one of the other rumors that I heard is about possibly acquiring some of the neighborhood, neighboring properties. No, this plan does not acquire neighboring properties. Yes, Mr. Oh, so you get like three to four questions of that set. I don't want to take. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the things is we have 25,000, 27,000 cars in Costco. And we're very good at getting more and more affordable housing, right? Just behind the shopping mall, we have two other projects, and something else will come. In a way, it would make Costco fairly ideal to think 2023 and beyond and make it a more walkable type of environment. So I think we should spend some time thinking about, you know, parking, make it safe for those who walk, the children, strollers, the bikers, and so on. 
And I do like the postal workers, but when I see postal workers leaving their cars in a prime spot all day long and the staff can't get a parking spot, then I think something isn't really right. Well, we, we should just kind of look at what's the parking ordinance and so on. Maybe there's ways we can optimize that a bit more. So the question had to do with the parking and the parking lot usage. So before we went into design, one of the things we did aside from the community survey was conduct a parking survey uh, of the branch usage during our busiest times. And uh, we measured uh, the different lots surrounding, not just the library lot here. And they found that there was a contingency uh, in morning times of, I think it was, what was it? About five to 10 or something. Yeah, the five to 10 spaces were available during those times. So, you know, a larger type of plan, though, you know, we're looking in the scope of the library here. Just a hint. Mm -hmm. I've parked a hint twice in oh. the last five, six years. Nothing dramatic, but some people took leave afterwards. It wasn't one of our staff, right? Are <laughs> you uh, sure it was no staff? Oh, good, good, good. Okay. We have we have an online question. How many gallons? <laughs> we we will take that under advisement as part of FF and E. Yeah, aquariums are cool, like in libraries. Oh, question in the back. So uh, I understand you guys can't do anything property, right? But directly, I guess. To the right here, so toward our, our school, not facing your front yard, right? So you could enhance that portion of the property, which will now reflect the children's kind of area of the library. Is there any plan to maybe make that a more usable space for children's programming or connect it with a door to get down there or anything like that? Okay. No. Uh, in a, in the previous plan, we did we did have uh, a a terraced area out to what I would call the east end of the building, which you're correct it is the front yard, but uh, I I I'm confused on on this building as well because I would call that the front yard because that's where the entrance is, but that's a parking lot, and and but the address is also uh, over here similarly so. I don't know where the where the front yard is and what have you, but uh, I think it and maybe in the future you know we'd have to look at setbacks. There would be a variance and and or we'd have to redefine where the what the where the front yard is you know on the building. But I think it it uh, you know outside space for children. You're 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 right on, and I think uh, it's something that we should you know look at into the future. Uh, aside from getting kind of mission one done, which is which is uh, expanding the library, and then you can probably come back and and uh, look at it in the future. There are a lot of additional people to do that outside, and we just wanted to streamline this process to get it in. Mm -hmm. like but you're on, you're on a good path. Okay. Okay. It's it's definitely a good path. In, in talking to our attorney, who's who's working getting us through. Planning zoning, which is which is the side yard? What is the front yard, and, and uh, what have you? So, uh, you know, but we have it on the not the bottom. Okay. But the mailbox is not suburban. So <laughs> there's a door at the far end of this building where you go out to get the mail. So <laughs> with the way that the land was originally purchased. Uh, there was a question, Jan, Jangela. So it was, when you see that rendering, it's beautiful of how the just blends in, but our windows confer a little bit more energy conscious of this being made and fresh air conscious is, are the old windows going to stay because you're make, matching them too, or can you have any kind of ventilation? Um, yeah. So there, we're contemplating two different types of windows. The one that's facing south is the same size as the ones that you have, which are full-size windows. 
for the meeting room to be used like we use it now, so that you can have all this pinup space, the, the um, western side, which we see on the drawings has three, four windows there, are the, these type of windows. They're up high, but they're on the western side. You, you'll have a lot of daylight coming in, but you also have the use of the wall below them. Operable windows. Yeah, they could be operable. Yeah. They're operable. They, 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 I, I see the little oh, handle there. Yeah. 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 De definitely, we we always do that in our. You know, we think that that's one of the nicest things to do in nice weather in spring to be able to open windows is is uh, you know it's wonderful. So we will include that um, as long as the board agrees. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I saw a, uh, just on that subject, I saw a, a private museum in Europe where they had a fancy window up there. It looked like that's what it had, and this wall was for books and everything. But the walls actually came out, folded out. And so if you have a meeting and you want all that sunlight in, you have a wall like this now, but they're actually folding panels. And some of them slid and some folded out for various reasons. But that it was an exhibit space. Um, that would be a great idea, I think, for this room to have panels. If you don't want it to have them, so they could slide out to get a lot of light in here for special events. And you really want all that light in it. Can, can I answer that? This room is 12 months of the year, an art showcase. The quilts you see now will be here till December 16th. And then a school will come in with their arts. And then in January, another school will come in and the walls will be full of art. So one of our concerns in this new design was to ensure that we're still able, because the community loves the art exhibits. The parents come, the, the grandparents come. So these walls, as you see them, are always covered in art. School so I wouldn't change that. I'm just saying that if there were an event and you wanted light, the panels would slide. But I want the arts. arts. I want the arts. Well, you mm -hmm. don't have to lose that. Your, your panels can slide when you want a, a meeting for a certain purpose or a demonstration that needs light, and then they slide back right as soon as the meeting's done. But I'm having a reception in here uh, in a couple of days, and if those were sliding and you wanted to open them, then the people who come to the reception would only see what a quarter of the art that we intended for them to see. I'm not being argumentative. I'm just saying we've had this discussion, and the board came down a hundred percent on maintaining our position in the community as an art showcase. I don't see why you can't have both. Why do you, why just just the having both? You have your wall and sliding panels for even. For whatever reason, thank you. Okay. You don't think it's important, but I think it's a it's a great option to have, and you don't lose that. So uh, one of the issues about about parking in the town lot, I have uh, it, in the past seen employees from Toyota parking there during the day, and you've got those two big bins for clothes, drop off, or whatever it is that that take a valuable parking space. So if we could put a put an end to both of those things. We could pick up the important spaces. There's a question. Uh, they've been asking online to repeat the question. And so the comment was about the use of the municipal lot and uh, how it's being occupied by bins and other obstructions and what we can do about that. That would be us at the library kind of working with our partners in the various town departments, particularly the parking services department, to try to make sure that we get those things clear if the lot is under great stress. So I appreciate I appreciate that comment. That would be something that we would Right, but working through the parking services department to kind of pull them out of there. Mm -hmm. All right, one last question for Mr. Ernst. My father, uh, let's talk about technology. Um, we again are in 2023, and I'm thinking 2030. So keyboards, lots of cablings, auto wires, and so on are just history. Uh, if you go to the New York Library, you can have a laptop loaner for two hours, four hours. 
you can have a tablet computer and whatever. I think we could gain a lot of space by not having these old clunker machines, you know, around with lots and lots of cables. So please move into the future. I, part of the thing that we were looking at is like replacing our current PCs with laptops instead, but some people like using those and we try to be here for all the community and have that available for them as they, as they, as technology progresses. So one of the things that we're doing in the next year library wide is we're doing a technology plan and this is certainly going to come into play, but the technology will change as time goes by. But what we're doing when we do these renovations is we try to uh, ensure that it's a uh, future fitted for, for the decades to come through appropriate cabling, channeling in the in the grade, that sort of thing. So certainly, you know, that's important to us as a library. So, um, so Deb Armstrong, I think you're up. Could come up the middle aisle, but that was too easy. <laughs> My name is Deborah Armstrong. I am a friend of the Costco Library, a very good friend of the Costco Library. I'm going to start with a weird joke. Back in the day, my father said to me, never be the last one between the boys and the bar. And yet here I am. So, <laughs> but my talk is very brief this evening. And we've already talked about monies and funding and those sorts of things. But I want to talk about fundraising efforts um, that the Friends will undertake to support the expansion and the things that go along with that expansion. Um, you know, the hardest part of fundraising is not the ask. It's not asking for the money. To me, the hardest part is cornering the donors. I've got to get your attention. I've got to get you over your objections. Um, so the popular perception that it's really hard to ask for money, that's not true. I can ask for money all day long. And I've, I've been through rejection. I'm a salesperson, so I understand being rejected. Um, but it is tough when you've got to find the donors and you've got to corner them. So that means I've got to find a way past your defenses. And I'll have to collect a lot of no's before I get to the yeses. So happily or unhappily, I'm ready to try take that on. But I was not rejected by another dear friend of the Costco Library who has agreed to be the co-chair of fundraising, Peter Berg. Peter, wave. Uh, Peter and I will uh, will carry on with fundraising. We're, we're, both of us are pursuing donors and donations. And briefly, so you know what we're what we're up to as we go along, our plan will focus first on major donations. Um, we really want to go into the community. We want the community to be able to contribute to this effort. We think that's really important. This is a fantastic project. Can I tell you how excited we are about it? Um, it's been a while getting here, uh, but we are here and we're gonna go into the donation seeking efforts, Peter and I. Subsequently, the friends are going to have a community wide effort where we um, are going to have an encore performance of the Buy a Brick program. The board has voted that once we get through the quiet phases of fundraising, the buy a brick was such a hit that we want to bring it back. So um, you will see the buy a brick program uh, if in its encore a year from now, maybe something like that, something like maybe a little over a year. Anyway, um, we are, um, we are intent on being good fundraisers and supporting this this project. So I thought for those of you who are anxious to join the donor group, Peter and I are both here tonight. So raise your hand, let us know. I do want to thank you for coming tonight. It's always great to see this room packed and we look forward to your support on this project. So thank you so much for coming tonight and thank you for turning out for really what's a very special place for the Costco community. Thank you. Okay.